What's up? It's Lakia, the female goat, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Count commas, etc. Money counter go beep beep. That new shit that them hoes drop was weak, weak. This heat a baker bitch up like a potty bitch sweet. All right, y'all. So we got Miss Lakia here today with us off the porch looking bad. Yeah. Looking fine. How are you? Doing? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to do this. We are excited to have you because you got the girls going crazy. Like on social media, all I see is Lakia, Lakia, Lakia. Listen, oh, yeah. did you ever think that you would get to this point that you are now? Yes. <laughs> no, but seriously, I did have doubt moments, of course. But uh, I knew I was going to be a part of QC. That's, that was the goal. I'm here now, so yeah. Now, I know that you are from Milwaukee, but you live in Atlanta now. But I want to go back to Milwaukee because I didn't watch a lot of documentaries over Milwaukee and y'all be getting down out there. I didn't know it was like how it is. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the culture out there. Um, the culture. I think I put it all in most of my songs. Like um, Big Flexer was definitely a moment that uh, explained the culture you know, where our buffs our careers and we get real fresh to death you know what i'm saying and that's just really what it is i mean milwaukee is known for the bucks and me <laughs> <laughs> now but other than that i mean my city's small and i mean i'm bringing culture to milwaukee it's not much to it small i love my city though now what was it like for you personally growing up there oh so Besides what's going on right now, I, I was a little, a little lame at home Besides, before I started dating my partner. Now, um, I used to have braces and glasses. I was into the books and shit, superheroes. So I'm a little different now. But um, yeah, I had my little group of friends and shit. It was ghetto. <laughs> Milwaukee is ghetto. People don't believe that it's black people there. Did you believe that? Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't until I watched this BBC <laughs> documentary and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, it's, it's like that. But other than that, it was real chill, like, I ain't need for nothing, and you know, <laughs> I was getting straight A's in school and shit. Now, I did see an interview where you did talk about throwing hands occasionally, so what would you say to. was like the wildest altercation that you had got in? I took my first L in middle school. It was really bad. I took my first L. She was a, a bigger girl. And you know, it wasn't even my fight, but she broke my friend's phone. So you know me trying to be tough and shit. Fought for her. And you know, she like beat my ass or whatever, but I we never ain't got take my no ass beat again. Right, right. <laughs> we didn't take no more L's after that though. I, you know, no, no more. That was, that was my only one. And I was little, <laughs> like. She took advantage of my size. She tossed my little ass. Now, being that Milwaukee is like, you know, a little tough, how were you able to stay afloat and stay motivated in that type of environment? My people, my partner, my friends that I had at the moment um, just kept me going. And like, I wasn't so much focused on be, being a local artist when I was there. Like, I was going viral on Instagram and YouTube and all that shit. So I would say my fans, all my supporters, definitely kept me above water and going. At what age would you say you officially jumped off the porch? Jumped off the porch? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say moving to Atlanta. That was when I jumped off the porch <laughs> because that's when I had to start paying my own bills and all that other shit. But you know, I ain't no, I ain't these girls that try to fake like they ghetto. You know what I'm saying? And when you say fake like you're ghetto, I hate that. Just in details, what do you mean by that? Like the the the, the trying to per, pretend like they got like the strong ghetto accents. The the bitch, I do. It, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I hate it. Like bitch, you is not in the streets. See me, I ain't gonna lie and say I'm in the streets, bitch. I had somebody else touch you or whatever, <laughs> but I ain't gonna do all that ghetto ass shit. I like get my nails done. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> Now, what were you say were some major life lessons you learned as you discovered life on your own? Major life lessons. Whew, pay your motherfucking bills on time. That's one. Um, I definitely would say, like, don't let stress take you down. Don't let stress take you out because it could have. My first year, I really didn't have a lot of money. In Atlanta, my first year in Atlanta, I didn't have a lot of money. Um, I wasn't working no jobs because I don't like working jobs. I was making money off Instagram and 
I could have drowned. So I'm going to say keep some real ass people around you and don't let stress take you out. And just going back to you living in your hometown, when did you realize it was time to get up out of there? After I graduated high school, I got accepted to some crazy colleges. I got accepted to a lot of HBCUs, um, some nice colleges in my hometown. And I'm like, I do not want to do that shit. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Because you can only be two things in my city, CNA, <laughs> or you can do some lashes. And I'm like, no. So I left. And I, I didn't even have it all planned out. I just was like, I got to go. So that's what I did. And transitioning to like a super busy city like Atlanta, was it very overwhelming for you? It still is overwhelming. Like you go back to my hometown, you can drive carefree through the city. Like this shit give you hell. Like the traffic, like have everything being 30 minutes apart. Like it's just get oh out here. Oh, it's getting to you too. God, <laughs> Lee, I didn't want to say it, but. Jesus I feel like it's Christ. A, Everything's it's, like 50 minutes, it's just 40 minutes away. So many people here and not enough space. That's yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. And just to fast forward a little bit, um, you were enrolled in the Art Institute and you dropped <laughs> out. So what made you take that leap of faith and drop out of that? Man, I'm telling you, like sometimes I don't even be knowing what be going on. I just be like, fuck this shit. Like I was sitting in class and I had a professor that was foreign and I didn't understand shit he was saying and I think that would, it just clicked and I'm like, I don't wanna do this no more. So I stopped going to class. I ain't tell my partner, I ain't tell my mom, nothing <laughs> like, cause my mom had put in a lot of money to um, get me in school and like she paid six months to rent up, everything. So I ain't tell nobody. I just stopped going to class. I used to Uber down there like, I'm gonna just act like I'm going, go to Starbucks, hit the mall and shit. And then I just stopped going. I just couldn't do it. But I was making a lot of money. I had dropped my first mixtape by myself with my partner and I was making money off that and like promotion off Instagram. So I'm like, fuck that, I don't need that shit. But I ain't tell nobody. And then I'm, I think my teacher, my uh, professor had called my mom and then I just had to confess. Like, I'm not going no more. What was her reaction with that? She was cussing me out so bad. I put all that money down and I paid off. She was doing me in, but it's good now. You up, you mm -hmm. with it. Now, what would you say is the scariest thing when it comes to taking a leap of faith to pursue your dreams? Mm, not knowing if you're gonna, you know, fail or if you're even gonna get there. And I wouldn't say mine was based off luck. Mine was definitely hard work and dedication and stuff, but sometimes people are unlucky. You know, you can move out here. I know a lot of people move from my city after I moved. Like, oh, it worked for her, but you know, Everybody path is not the same, so I could have failed. I didn't. That's what it is. But to, you know, change generational shit, you gotta be a risk taker and I had to take a risk. And I wanna touch on quality control because I looked into the story and how you got the attention of P was determination, like yes. you said. Um, so how did you guys initially link? So P DM me. Um, I had did JT's first day out challenge. Well, I made it a challenge by doing the remix to it. And um, he had DM me in January, like, you sign? I'm like, no, I'm like, bro, you just DM me, you finna sign me, bro. And he had me waiting so freaking long. Like, he didn't even DM me back. And months and months had passed. And I remember seeing an interview of him. I think he had took Layden or something to the breakfast club. And I was like, turn this shit off. I don't want to hear nothing about P. I don't want to hear nothing about P. But then, like, I did the We Pay situation um, when it was hot. And then Baby had, like, co-signed the comment. Like, I don't know who she is, but she hard as fuck. And, like, like a week or two later, P had signed me. He had DM me, like, you signed? I'm like, no. He like, what's your number? And then he called me. And that's how that happened. Now, tell us about the strategy that you used to catch his attention. I'm okay. The strategy for real was consistency because I just was like, I got to keep dropping. But I definitely wanted to remix so many songs from artists that he had. So I did the JT, I did all uh, Layton stuff. I think I did Amigo one, Baby. Just trying to catch his attention. And I had my fans spamming the hell out of him. I know he was irritated. Like, <laughs> they were spamming his comments, spamming my comments with his name, DMing him. So yeah, I low key harassed him, you know. <laughs> 
And when you were initially dropping the freestyle, was he giving you any feedback or responses when you were tagging him in it? He would like it, but he wasn't saying anything. I'm like, okay, he watching, but he wasn't saying anything. He and DM comment nothing for eight months. So I'm like, he don't want to sign me, y'all. He said, fuck me. Did you get a little discouraged like when he was dropping? You was like, dang, like, can you just say something? Yes, I had got discouraged after he and DM. So when it had moved into February, um, I'm just like, Fuck that shit. You know, somebody can play you. So that's what I was thinking. Like, he not gonna sign me. So I definitely got discouraged. I had, cause I told you I wasn't working jobs at the moment. And I'm like, damn, that was gonna be my moment or whatever. But I don't like working jobs. So I was just like quitting everyone I did. I was working at hotels, everything. And then I'm just like, I'm gonna keep going. And I dropped my tape. And I think that he noticed that too. So yeah, I had a lot of discouraging moments. I was out there by myself, no family, just my partner, and we was hustling. Like it had got to a point where we couldn't even like go out to eat and shit. Couldn't buy a Christmas tree on Christmas. It was just fucked up. So you know, I had my discouraging moments for sure. And how did you pick yourself up out of those discouraging moments? I don't even know if I even picked myself up. I think my music was my getaway. I kept doing a lot of freestyles and just really put my pain into my art, um, my partner, you know, held it down. Going to get jobs when I wasn't working and stuff, but I definitely was going through it like that whole first year. It was crazy. And you are the first female out of Milwaukee to make it out. But why do you think it's so hard for other artists to make it out of Milwaukee? For one, the city is not really known for anything. As, like Atlanta is known for music, I would say. It's like they have a lot of culture here and stuff. Like we don't, for one, nobody's ever came from there. Or two, like for a long, long time, the damn Bucks wasn't winning anything. So ain't nobody <laughs> paying attention to them. Like it's just like nobody really paying attention to our city and Chicago and Detroit is definitely Midwest, but those were the cities that people knew of, of Midwest. Like if I say Milwaukee, besides the Bucks winning the championship this year, would you have known anything about it? Well, for the document, well, <laughs> watching documentaries, yes. Yeah. But I would say if I haven't have watched that, I probably wouldn't have really like right. dug deep into so it. So that is a reason. We never really had like a light over our city, you know? And would you say that now that you're breaking those doors down, you could kind of see the opportunities coming more towards that area? I think people are noticing that you have to chase something now because it happened for me. So people are like, damn, it could happen for me too. I'm seeing so many people from my city relocate, you know, taking their craft serious. So I would say that's what's happening. I wouldn't say people are like, oh, let's go find us an artist out of Milwaukee, but they definitely, the people there are taking shit serious now. Do you think it'll eventually get to that point where people start going to Milwaukee and being like, okay, let's go see if they, what they got going on there? I don't know. I said it all the time to my partner, like, I don't know, because P didn't sign me because I'm from Milwaukee. Right. I think he signed me for my talent, and I just hope that I'm motivating people to go chase a dream, because this shit can happen. That's all. <laughs> And getting back into your younger days, who would you say were some musical influences for you? Nicki Minaj, definitely. <clears throat> for a long time, we only had Nicki. Right. Years. She had her crazy ass run, you know? <laughs> so definitely Nicki. Um, my R&B side was in love with Tink. Yes, for a long, long time. Um, and I'm going to say T Grizzly, because when he came out, it was just like, bro, this he just matches my energy. And... You know, I got a song with him now, so go watch that through and through the full info. <laughs> what would you say brings out the best in you musically? Brings out the best in me. I would say when I'm inspired, like inspiration. When I'm around people with a lot of money. When I'm um, out in LA, I see all these vibes and stuff. So definitely when I'm inspired. And for two, when I'm on my R&B shit, when my feelings are hurt, that brings out that, you know? <laughs> that heartbreak. Yes. <laughs> and where would you say you get your inspiration from when it comes to writing your music? Besides my being in my feelings, I don't know, I just think I'm a storyteller. Like, I'm a Pisces, I did poetry, and I'm just able to just, you know? I love the hell out of Pisces, oh my gosh. Yes, 
I just recently um, learned that Tink and Janae Iko are Pisces, and I'm like, it makes so much sense. Y'all are like a, a sweet, angelic, toxic. I ain't gonna lie though. Like, you know, people wouldn't think y'all toxic, but y'all could be y'all could be a little. Not that. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, as you get further into your career, what are some major sacrifices that you've had to make so far? Oh. I have cut so many people off because I have been getting, um, what's it called? Survivor's guilt. That's what T. Grizzly told me. It's like when you make it and then you feel bad for people that can't be around you. And I've had to really cut a lot of people off for trying to be around for the wrong reasons. So I'm gonna definitely say that having to not be around the people that I love the most because they resent me for my situation. You know what I'm saying? So that's been a super huge sacrifice. And my fucking peace. Like, nothing is organ. Like, I'm just working all the time. I'm, I've been busy for a really, really long time. So I'm never really, like, at peace. And I can't chill at home and sleep anymore. I'm working off four hours of sleep all the time. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> and when you do have free time, what do you do? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I that's right. Sleep. My person cook a good meal and we sleep because we don't get no sleep, unless we're on a plane. Now, I will say, um, just to touch back on when you said you cut people off, did you communicate with them like, hey, or was it kind of just like a ghost? I don't know if that's a pricey thing, but I definitely ghost people. Like, you won't even know why I'm mad at you or anything or what's happening because it's just like, fuck you. I feel like I don't need to explain. You know what you did. So I don't talk to people. I've always been like that. Like, I just be like, and you know, sometimes you gotta move like that because like you said, people be knowing what they're doing. Like, mm -hmm. there's no need to explain. And if you talk to them, they're gonna try to explain and mm -hmm. apologize and me being such a, I don't wanna forgive. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> now, I was reading an XX article on you and you stated in there that you felt like there's never been a moment in music history, like what's been being experienced right now. So from that statement, in your eyes, where do you think hip hop is headed? Man, I really think females, females are gonna dominate the game soon to come. Like, it's just been so many, it's like we can't keep up all the females that came out, that are coming out, and you know, so many females are, I don't even listen to male music like that no more, unless it's Lil Baby. But other than that, it's just like, I really do feel like the women are about to dominate, take control, take charge, and show y'all who the hell y'all should be listening to. That's what I feel like is gonna come. And what I mean by that is look at all these females coming out. That's what I really meant. It's a really, really good change. Really, really good one. And speaking of XXL, congratulations, because this year you made XXL yes. freshmen. Now, yes. I will say, I felt like they were being kind of harsh this year, especially with Koi Ray. So what were your thoughts on the critics? I just feel like people are gonna talk regardless. You just gotta be me, I feel like I, you know, you come in this shit and you gotta be built for it. Stuff is gonna happen. People are gonna talk. Whether you're good or bad or bad or good, people are gonna talk. But um, I definitely told her she should just keep her head up, keep going. Do you? I mean, as for me, I came there and I really, I knew I was coming to show who I am. A lot of people were known before XXL, like, Shit, when they showed who I was, they was like, who, who, who is she, you know? Like, so people aren't gonna talk. Me, I'm just like, fuck it. And they gonna listen regardless. They listen to her shit, whether she did bad or good. Now we gotta talk about, we have to talk about popping. I kinda want you to say the line. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I might take your nigga shopping. Show you how it's popping. Period. So, you like that line? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like linking up with Gucci Man for that song? Surreal. Everything that's been happening in my career is definitely surreal. It's like, this is all happening so fast. And for me, little old me, you know? So it's crazy. My city loves Gucci as much as they love, like, Boosie. So yeah. And what was the vibes like when you first met him? He's so real and player, you know? He was telling me how good I am. And keep going and how he wanted me to work with some of his artists and stuff. And yeah, he's just a real genuine guy. And he hopped right on it, sent the track back, and it was a smash. 
That was, song is really, really good. A hit. I love that song. Yes, that's one of my favorites. And we got Big Flexer with 42 Doug. Talk about that Milwaukee and Detroit dynamic with that song. The same thing that happened with the um, Milwaukee and Detroit situation with T Grizzly. Like, it just, it just sounds so good together, you know? Um, so that came about actually like my first time I went to the studio with P, he heard that track. He told me to send him some songs. He heard that one. He like, Doug sounds so good on this. Sent it right back. We were shooting the video like ASAP. And that shit sounds so good. That's, that's my favorite song. And it was my favorite video to shoot. What would you say are the similarities with the Milwaukee and Detroit sound? Oh, it's very similar. I don't think there really is a difference, but that's what makes the Midwest sound what it is. The only people that don't sound like that is Chicago because they do like the drill rap and mm -hmm. stuff. But other than that, Milwaukee and Detroit is so, so similar with even like, that's why I don't understand why they want to get on my ass. I can like, she want to be from Detroit, she want to be from Detroit. It's not that, it's just our culture. It's very, very similar. Like we down the street from y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all call them Buzz, we call them Cardis, we call them Yays, really. And, you know, we cousins. Y'all kind of got the they, same accent exactly. too though, like, like. What do I sound like? People say I sound proper. Um, I will say that Midwest in the Bay Area, like Cali, yeah, y'all got the same type of accent. Like my, my people from Michigan and they sound like they're from Cali. So I would really? say, yeah, like, I don't know what it is. Y'all do talk proper, but it ain't like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still, it got a twang to it. So it ain't, you know? Yeah. And I also want to talk about my time because you just recently dropped that with the legendary Gangster Grills. How did you link up with DJ Drama? P set that up for me. He like, you got to get you a Gangster Grills. And I'm text DJ Drama and DJ Drama had like a list of people that he had to get to. But he made sure that he got it done for me out of love for P. And he told me I was really, really good. So yeah that's how that happened and it came out really really good like at first i was nervous like the first time i went in the studio with him i'm like because he told me to play some tracks for him I'm like he's not gonna like my song you know like he done did it against the grills with so many men like some goats in the game but he really really supported me he told me it sounded good as fuck and we sound good together too it was giving like beat me up scotty and as I was on your Twitter, um, I saw that you tweeted that this chapter in your life is called My Time. So in further details, talk about this specific chapter that you're in right now. Yeah, I mean, it's self-explanatory, just like the tape. Um, I would definitely say this chapter is me, like, not even just focusing in on myself, but focusing in on my craft and just, like, perfecting it and just showing the world that it's my turn. I didn't want to say my turn, it's my time. Because, you know, we trying to stay in that time situation right. <laughs> but it's definitely my time to show the world who I am you know get them comfortable with me recognize who the female goat is and you know stop asking who she is every time y'all see me on these magazines and you go ahead and say that in the stop asking who she is every time y'all see me on these covers these magazines these articles everything <laughs> <laughs> period now 313-414 featuring T Grizzly go ahead and Talk to us all about that. I know you can hear me bring it up. That's like one of my favorites off the project. And like, that was a situation I was super nervous doing because he worked with, you know, hard people too. And he's so hard, like lyrical. And he's one of my favorite rappers. So I was super nervous when I went in the studio, but he was so real and genuine down to earth. And he just gave me a bunch of free game. Before we even start recording, he just talked to me. We went in, like the vibe was, the chemistry was crazy. And we walked all over that beat, so yeah. <laughs> and I know y'all shot the visual in Milwaukee yeah. and Atlanta, so what made y'all take it back to <laughs> Atlanta too? We only shot it in Milwaukee. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. sorry, I read that in an article. Well, Milwaukee, but how was it taking <laughs> T Grizzly to Milwaukee to shoot that? Well, they love him there, so I think he had, was already familiar with it, but um, it was, I really wanted to shoot it in Milwaukee and Detroit so I could get the, sense of Detroit too, but I'm going there this weekend, so I'm gonna get the sense of it. But it was cool, I felt like I was showing my brother around. Now was the trophy the real Milwaukee Bucks yeah. trophy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody keep asking me how I got it. Um, my manager and stuff made that happen, 
And um, P loved the picture. He was like, that's going to be your cover art. That, that's going to be your cover art. So that's how that came about. But yeah, it was the real one. You thought I had a duplicate or something? Dang, y'all really got the real, real one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, Lord. I wish Giannis was there. That would have been just made the whole like video right. come together. But he wasn't. <laughs> now, you know what I love about you? I love that you can tap into trap shit and you can also tap into the girly shit. So, is there a chance that we can expect a full project on some certified lover girl? Mm. Yeah, I would do it, but I think I want to establish myself as the best rapper, the top female artist before I switch over to that lane, because I don't want people to get confused, like, you know, because I can do both, very, very versatile, but I really want to establish myself as a hard-ass rapper first, and then I'm going to show them. You know how Nicki had her eras? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. And with the recent controversy that was surrounding Lil Nas expressing his sexuality, from a women's perspective, do you feel that the music industry can be a bit one-sided when it comes to males coming out? Hell yeah. It's so much easier for uh, women to be who they are or show who they are, express who they are. Um, it's always going to be like that. We're not even just the music industry. The whole world is like that. Very, very harsh on men being gay and stuff. But I respect him to the fullest power because he is really doing him fuck all the criticism. So yeah, I aspire to be that carefree. And when it comes to the LGBTQ community in hip hop, do you think it'll ever come to a point where homophobia will come to an end? Um, we can hope, but I feel like he's opening those doors. Him, right. Santana, Kid Ken, like they really are opening those doors, especially for men coming out. And um, I don't know, because people are weird about, you know, people are very homophobic, you know. So we, it'll probably never end, but it will get better. Like people are very accepting of him right now, so. And they we really ain't got hope. no choice, because he gonna troll the fuck out of you. And do what he has to do. <laughs> Just having to be firm all the time, especially with this being like a male dominated industry. Yeah, you just gotta do, as a woman, you gotta do everything like 10 times better. You gotta be a hard ass performer, a hard ass rapper. You gotta, it's just so much. You gotta show this, you gotta be shaped like this. It's all type of shit. That's why I commend people like, you know, all the girls that's doing them, and I commend me for not giving a fuck too. You know, that's just what you gotta do to get through this, because they're gonna judge you regardless and talk regardless. So, it's gonna be a woman dominated game. They're just gonna have to accept it. And in your opinion, what do you think it takes to have longevity in this game as a female artist? Consistency. You can't just, like, oh, I got a hit song, and then just sit down for a moment. Like, you're not even established enough to do that. You really got to keep going, keep dropping, keep feeding your fans, because they will say fuck you and move on to the next artist. That's just what happens. Like, Nicki and hadn't, she didn't take her foot off our neck for a long, long time. And, you know, that's just what I'm here for, consistency. I, I haven't stopped yet since I got here. I just love you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she loves me. And we got My Time Is Up. What is next for you, Lakia? I just said it, like, I ain't gonna stop. But um, I'm about to go on tour with Tusi, and that's next. Um, in October, we got Rolling Louds, and I'm gonna be working on my next project, of course, or next single, whatever. But that's what's next for me, and I'm gonna be at the top, so y'all can see me there. And before we wrap up, do you have any advice for the younger girls that may be looking up to you? Yes, do not give up on yourself. I'm gonna say that. Don't give up on yourself because I am proof that it can happen. And I say that for people in my city and any young girl that was like me with her glasses and her braces and felt like, you know, normal. It's just, it's gonna be this for you next. You know what I'm saying? So just keep going. And any last words or shout outs? Yes. I love all my major keys. <laughs> That's all, y'all. Count commas, etc. Money counter go beep beep. That new shit that them hoes drop was weak, weak. This heat a baker bitch up like a potty bitch, sweet, sweet. You can do anything in 